Pretend for a minute that you're a scientist in a lab. You have a eureka moment, and you get a result that confirms your hypothesis. This could be big, but what do you do? How do you tell the world? How do you confirm that your results are valid, that no one else has already had the same discovery, and ultimately, how do you get rewarded for your achievement? This happens every day in laboratories all over the world. The scientists in the past Rothamsted Wiffy Wee example represent just one group using the scientific method to answer a small question. Science is cumulative, and the sum of this type of work results in the production of scientific knowledge. But how is scientific knowledge accumulated to make up science? Who are the gatekeepers? And ultimately, what does it mean for science to be published, replicable, and to reach consensus? Though conversations between scientists on controversial topics happen in journal review papers, letters to the editor, presentations, books, patents, and less formal social media and blogs, the gold standard of scientific information sharing is the peer-reviewed journal article. Different scientific communities and disciplines are governed by various professional societies, such as the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Society for Plant Biologists, the Academy of Sciences in many different countries, and the Royal Society, as well as different journals, including Nature, Science, and Cell, to name a few. A journal article allows a scientist to tell a story of how they use the scientific method to reach a result. The sum of these publications and journals is known as the scientific literature. The first steps after your eureka moment include a cursory search of the literature to confirm that it's original, and then you choose a journal to try to publish it in. Journals are ranked by impact factor, or a me measurement of the times it's cited and its prestige. It's important to keep in mind that the publishing process can take a long time, even months, so this process of communication between scientists is a very slow one. Overlapping or conflicting research claims are common. A journal article includes an abstract and an introduction, which state the original hypothesis. Materials and methods sections then spell out exactly what has been done in the laboratory in a way that the study can be replicated. And finally, discussion and conclusion sections evaluate the study's results and its broader impacts. A paper draft is first submitted to an academic journal, screened by an editor, and, if accepted, sent to experts in that subject area. These so-called peer reviewers advise a journal editor on how to proceed, or what changes need to be made to the article to make it publishable. These quality controls give us confidence in much of the peer-reviewed scientific literature. By and large, science is a great system of checks and balances. Science is self-correcting. But it's not perfect. Publication bias, or what's called the file drawer problem, occurs when the results influence whether or not a paper is published, regardless of how sound its methods are. Unless results are statistically significant or interesting, scientists often don't even pursue publication. They file it away for later. This leads to a body of scientific literature that is systematically different than the results of studies not published. Fundamental to the scientific method is reproducibility in research. An entire study must be replicable. However, there is a tendency to reward statistically significant or positive results, giving them far greater odds of publication than negative, uninteresting, or repeated ones. As we see in the Rothamsted Wiffy Wheat case, sometimes failures lead to more interesting and productive results. But in order to learn from them, we must be transparent about more than just successes in the laboratory. The good news is that scientists are recognizing this to be a problem. Authors are increasingly making all of their data available online in supplemental materials. They're informally discussing their research in blogs and on social media channels, and are pushing journals to modernize paper submission and review policies. Production of scientific knowledge through the means of building a body of scientific literature allows the scientific community to make judgments and take positions on issues of perceived controversy. Notably, this includes topics such as evolution, climate change, and, in our case, risks of GMOs. Consensus does not mean unanimous agreement by all scientists, 
but it often provides a starting point for turning scientific research into actionable policy and communications efforts that collectively can impact society.